Hello everyone, my name is Anna Antonova and I'm a PhD student at Aalto University and today I would like to represent the part of my research topic uh, that is uh, focusing on the modification of the fiber roughness and its effect on the interface and the bond between the fibers and the cement phase. So as you, oh, sorry, as you all know, uh, the uh, uh, cementitious composite a complex material uh, that can be considered on the several scales and so is the fiber reinforced cementitious composite and uh, in the scope of our research project we're interested in the microscale properties of this material because the interaction between the cement phase and the fibers on the micro scale define defines uh, the stress transfer mechanisms between those two contacting materials and as a result, the performance of the uh, final composite on a structural level. Uh, so to study the uh, interaction between cement phase and the fibers, it is important to know the properties of each contacting material separately. Uh, and there was already done a lot of studies regarding the microstructure of the cement matrix, uh, cementitious matrix around the inclusions. Uh, so as fibers uh, and uh, this uh, um, cement matrix close to the inclusions is also called interfacial transition zone or IDIT set. Uh, however, there is still a lack of the information regarding the properties, uh, influence of fiber properties on this interaction between cement phase and the fibers. Therefore, uh, in uh, uh, as the goal of our research project, uh, we decided to evaluate the effect of fiber surface roughness on fiber wetting, uh, microstructure of the cement based around the fiber, and, uh, and what, what would be the resulting capacity of the fiber matrix bond. So for that purpose, we used most commonly used steel fibers in Finland. This is steel fibers with a hooked end. Uh, however, since uh, we were interested in a context, so in, in a fusion and friction, but not in mechanical, uh, uh, a mechanical anchorage of those fibers, we removed the hooked ends and used those fibers as uh, straight fibers. So uh, here in the picture, you can see uh, the uh, surface, the, the image of the fiber, the non processed fiber surface. Uh, so this is actually how they are under the microscope. And then we treated those fibers two different ways. Uh, first of all, we wanted to decrease the roughness of those fibers. So we uh, polished them electrolytically in the solution of nitric acid and ethanol uh, at minus 30 degrees and the electric current of 20 volts. And then we increased the roughness uh, of initial fibers by sanding them with 60 micrometer grade sandpaper in the perpendicular direction to the x-axis of the fiber. So now I, I will introduce you step uh, by step uh, uh, experimental, uh, experimental package that we did. So first of all, uh, we evaluated the uh, fiber roughness with atomic force a microscopy and still spectrometer. And then we studied uh, its effect on the wettability of the fibers by measuring the uh, contact angles of the water droplet uh, on the fiber surface. And uh, then uh, as a next step, uh, we were interested in uh, how the different fiber roughnesses and their wettabilities, if they're changing, will influence uh, the distribution of the porosity and unhydrated cement grains from the fiber surface and in the cement, uh, in the, uh, cement phase. So for that purpose, we uh, did many, <laughs> uh, uh, many images of the uh, cement phase uh, uh, close to the fiber and process them to get the distribution of the porosity and unhydrated cement grains from the fibers. And uh, as the last step, uh, we uh, did the pull out test to evaluate the capacity of the fiber matrix bond that is influenced by all those microscale parameters. So uh, further, I'll show you some results that we obtained within those measurements. Uh, first of all, uh, after we measured uh, 
uh, the surfaces of each fibers uh, of each fiber we received uh, the following surface profile and as you can see there is a difference in obvious difference in the roughnesses so uh, after this step uh, we uh, aim to measure the variability of those fibers so we measure the advancing angle of the droplet on the fibers the advancing angle defines uh well it explains or like showing how the water is spreading along uh, uh the dry surface and then we also measure the receding angle which showing uh, which is showing how the water is sticking to the wet surface and uh, i will explain you our results from the physical point of view uh, with the following examples. So as you can see, uh, there, there is like per each uh, sample example here, there is a droplet with a notation of the angles. So the left uh, hand side angle is the receding angle and the angle on the right side hand is the advancing angle. So as you can see, the larger is the difference between those angles, the better water is uh, spreading along the fiber. So in a case of the sanded fiber, which has the largest roughness, what we see is that water is more likely to spread as the water film along the fiber. And this is um, what we're actually aiming to because uh, it will facilitate the efficient filtration of the cement paste close to the fiber. In the case of polished fibers, the droplet will move along the fiber surface as it is. So there, uh, it most probably would still be gathered as a droplet and result in a water agglomeration uh, around the fiber. And usually this kind of agglomeration they cannot completely be utilized during the filtration process, so they stay there and result in a large void uh, at the interface between the fiber and the cementitious matrix, which is not good for both durability and the capacity uh, of, of the composite. So to prove this assumption that uh, we uh, made based on the uh, variability measurement, uh, we decided to study the micro scale of the uh, uh, microstructure of the uh, cementitious matrix around the fiber. So for that purpose, uh, we did the uh, images of the micro of the interface between the fiber and the cement matrix along the whole interface between those contact two contacting materials and received the following backscatter electron images. Uh, on a uh, backscatter electron image, the pores are usually represent uh, the black spaces, the, 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 the darker spaces, and unhydrated semi grays represent the brighter spaces. So further, what we did, we segmented those faces with k-means clustering algorithm and received the following segmented images, where the red uh, face is unhydrated semi face, uh, uh, semen grains and uh, blue are the pores. So after that, we divided those uh, images uh, stripe-wise. Uh, the width of each stripe was five micrometers. And then we calculated the area fraction of each face in each stripe and received the distribution of those faces from the fiber surface. So this is the uh, results of the porosity distribution. As, and as you can see, there is a clear effect of the fiber roughness. So the larger is the roughness of the fiber, uh, the smaller is the porosity around it. Another interesting observation that we also noticed uh, is that uh, around uh, all of the polished fibers, that we uh, had, we noticed this large, uh, large void uh, here. Uh, in the case of other fibers, uh, the amount of those pores was rather very small uh, as for non-processed fibers, or there was none uh, this kind of large pores in the case of uh, sanded fiber. Then, um, uh, 
In the case of the distribution of unhydrated salmon grades, we didn't notice any clear effect of the fiber surface. So then we moved to the single fiber pullout test. For single fiber pullout test, we tested uh, cement based cylinders uh, with the steel fibers inside. Uh, the steel fiber was embedded in each cell cylinder uh, for 30 millimeters and the uh, free end of the fibers was fixed in a metal road with three screws. Then uh, this sample was installed into the setup that we developed uh, for uh, that testing. And we loaded the sample with uh, two, uh, two uh, loading speeds. The first one was 0 0.05 millimeters per minute. And we prolonged this uh, loading uh, till we gain one millimeter of slip. Within uh, this uh, slip, the, uh, the uh, um, sample uh, you, uh, reached the uh, uh, maximum peak uh, load. And after that, we proceed with a faster speed to see how uh, fiber would be slipping out of the cement tape. So here are the results. And as you can clearly see, in the case of polished fibers, the slippage is faster than in the other cases. And actually, the fiber was uh, falling out of the cement paste after reaching 20 mil millimeters. In the case of non-processed fiber, uh, the slippage was just gradually decreasing to the complete pullout. And in the case of sanded fibers, uh, we noticed, uh, and you also can see it now, this uh, increase of loading after the peak pullout load. And uh, also the peak pullout load was increasing with the increase of fiber roughness. So to sum up our research, uh, I would like to say that the increase of fiber roughness uh, actually improved the improves the variability of the fibers, which facilitates the decrease of porosity near the fibers. And as a result, it influences uh, the capacity of the fiber matrix bond before the debonding and also after the debonding. Therefore, uh, I would like to admit that it is important to consider the properties of the fiber surface while developing this material and not but not neglect it thank you for your attention